Hello everyone, welcome to this award-winning video on how to calculate the axis of symmetry and the location of the vertex of a parabola using its equation with me, Mr. Weichhorst. As you watch this video, I encourage you to pause the video as many times as you need to and copy notes as you see that you need. Now, what I want to review with you before I go over how to do that are two things. One are the parts of a parabola. Well, we know three parts of a parabola. We know a parabola has the roots, which is where it hits the x-axis, the vertex, which is its turning point. Notice in this example, the roots and the vertex are the same. And we also have that line in the middle that goes through the vertex, which is called the axis of symmetry. In addition to that, we've been graphing parabolas. And the way that we've been graphing parabolas is by creating a table of values. And notice, in all of the table of values that we've been creating, in this example, it's y equals x squared minus 2, the middle point has always had an x value of 0. And that's always the vertex. And that's this example here. So what we've been doing is we've been creating those points and then graphing them to create our parabola. But there's a problem with that. In all of the examples we've done, the axis of symmetry and the vertex have always been at this point where x is 0. Not all parabolas look like that. For example, if you look at the one on the left here, this parabola, which is concave down, looks like its vertex is right here at 2, 1, which means its axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. On the one on the right here, the parabola, which is concave up, has a vertex at 1, negative 2, and it has an axis of symmetry of x equals 1. So the question is, what do we do when we have an equation of a parabola with an axis of symmetry and a vertex that don't go through the y-axis? Well, before we go to that, we need to explore this concept here. And you need to keep in mind as I show you this, that the axis of symmetry of a parabola always passes through the vertex. So what I mean by that is, if you look at this one on the right again, the axis of symmetry in this parabola, which is x equals 1, passes through the point 1, negative 2. In the one on the left, the axis of symmetry, which is x equals 2, passes through the point 2, 1, which means that the x value of the vertex is the same as the axis of symmetry. So, when we have the equation of a, of a parabola, to calculate its axis of symmetry, we're going to use the following formula. We'll talk about its proof later on, but for now just know the formula. To calculate the axis of symmetry, we use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. Remember the values of b and a come from the equation itself. So if I wanted to find the axis of symmetry of the, line, of the parabola, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5, I have to remember that b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 6, and a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. So to do this calculation, I first substitute in my value of b and my value of a, and I end up with 6 over 2 to get 3. That means my axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Then to get the rest of the vertex, all I'm missing is the y value. Because if you remember from before, the axis of symmetry always passes through the vertex. So to calculate that, all I do is substitute the axis of symmetry into the equation. So you can see I took 3 for x, and put it everywhere I saw x in the original equation, and I get y equals negative 4, meaning that my vertex is at 3, negative 4. So if I were to look at the graph of this parabola, this is what it would look like. If you made the table of values, you would notice the points that are on this blue parabola would be in your table. And my axis of symmetry is 3, and my vertex is at 3, negative 4. So just to summarize, to calculate the axis of symmetry of any parabola, you're going to use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. Once you calculate the axis of symmetry, if you need the vertex, just substitute that value to get y. So now what I want you to do, now that you've watched the video, is I want you to go on the Google form on the website and answer the question there as best as you can. You may go back and watch this video as many times as you need to until you understand. 